Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm back with another video in my Samosa video quilt along series. We finished the quilt top, so in this video we're talking all about batting. All right, so if you're a new quilter, let's briefly recap what makes a quilt. I have some little quilts here that'll be easy for me to hold up. The front, whatever patchwork design you make, that's called the quilt top, which is what we have here and where we are in the Samosa Quilt Along series at this step. The whole front has been put together into one big sheet. That's our quilt top. On the back, you're gonna have it could be a whole nother design. It could just be a solid piece of really large fabric. It can be a couple different chunks of fabric pieced together, but basically you end up with another sheet of fabric on the back and that we call our quilt backing. Then we have something in the middle that gives it some nice drape, a little bit more warmth. It's kind of the fluffy feel that you feel inside of a quilt and that is made up of our quilt batting. So I have my personal favorite quilt batting right here for you. We carry this in our online shop, so if you've never tried it, because it can be a little bit tricky to get your hands on, since this company is family owned and it's all in the United States, it's made in the US, you'll usually only find this kind of batting at independent quilt shops. So we carry this in our online shop if you wanna try it. It's called Quilter's Dream. And let me talk a little bit about the makeup as far as the fiber content of a lot of different battings on the market. You can find batting that's 100% cotton or 100% polyester. Oftentimes there's also a blend, typically an 80% cotton, 20% polyester. But there are also battings that are made out of things like bamboo, hemp, wool. You can even find batting that's made from post-consumer recycled bottles, plastic bottles. So there's a ton of different battings out there and I would recommend that you try some different ones out. If you haven't yet tried a few different types and brands, but this is personally my favorite that I use for work type of quilt projects that I need to make and also on my own personal quilts that I make to gift people in my family and my loved ones. So the batting that I like to use is the Quilter's Dream and they also have different fiber content blends in their battings, but the one that I like to use and we carry it in our online shop is their 100% pure cotton batting. It's undyed, it's the natural color of the cotton and there are two different weights to this that I'm going to recommend to you. One is Select, which is kind of the medium weight loftiness to the batting and my absolute favorite one is the request this is their thinnest weight loftiness right as how thick the batting is it's again 100 percent cotton it's all usa grown cotton and this has no scrim no glue no binders so there's some other battings out there that oftentimes you will use them either for free motion quilting or on a long arm quilting machine and they'll give you problems depending on what side you place the batting and they just happen to have like extra stuff in there that it's not just the cotton that we're using in our quilts i prefer to stay away from those kinds of battings so this is a really good high quality cotton batting. Now let me show you something. These are both throw size, which measures 60 inches by 60 inches. So if I put them side by side, I'm hoping you can see it there. This one is significantly thinner than this one here. This is select, so the medium weight, it's still a very nice lightweight batting, but I live in Florida and a lot of times I get questions from beginners looking to find out, you know, what type of batting do you use because I know you live in Florida. So I wanna make one for my grandkids or for my daughter who lives in a warmer climate. And maybe they typically use a really lofty cotton or cotton and wool batting and they wanna find something lighter that you can still use in warmer climates. That is where this uh, request thickness, the thinnest version of the Quilter's Dream Cotton comes in. This stuff is amazing. I have used the polyester one in the past, years and years ago, because it is more affordable, but the 100% cotton request is amazing. And I will see if I can kind of show you, because these quilts have it in there. So this is my Any Which Way, it's a little wall hanging quilt, but can you see how drapey this is? It's not stiff at all. Oftentimes you think that you want something stiff if you're making a wall hanging. I want a really lightweight, thin quilt that's gonna just drape and hang off the wall. I'm gonna fold this up for you because this I hand quilted it and I was able to put this little quilt, I mean in a little bag that was almost nothing and take it with me as I traveled when I was doing the hand quilting on it and also hand sewing on the binding. Look how little. There's no extra puffiness to this batting. It just has an amazing, amazing drape to it. Again, I said it's all 100% cotton. There's nothing else in it. 
And this is absolutely my favorite. Now here I have a quilt that I use with the other one, the 100% cotton, same, same manufacturer, same everything, except it's a little bit thicker than the request level. This is the select. Now this quilt I made using half of a stack of the 10 inch squares with my 10 inch slicer ruler. So I did make this one using the same ruler that we used to make the samosa quilt. So if you have a 10 inch slicer because you're working on the samosa quilt along with us, Go ahead and check out the link that I've included for you below. There's a page with all the video tutorials on how you can use the 10 inch slicer to make different type of quilt blocks. And this is just another example of those that you can choose from there. So let me see if I can give it a good flip to see if you can see how drapey it is. For little kids, even if you're making a quilt for a larger bed, a full size bed, you don't really want this super heavy, heavy, well at least we don't in Florida, want a super heavy, heavy quilt that they're not gonna be able to move under. These are quilts with this batting that you can take with you in the car, on an airplane, pack it in a little kid's bag, uh, you know, weekender bags for toddlers and things like that. You can just fold this up into practically nothing and I'm gonna share with you one of my main, main reasons of why I recommend this batting. And that is because it's lighter and it has nothing in it, no fillers, no scrim and nothing like that, you're not fighting with the batting as you're trying to machine quilt it. Especially those of you that are wanting to quilt quilts on a sit down sewing machine or if you're hand quilting it. There's no scrim, there's no extra adhesive, there's nothing in there that's gonna hinder you from doing your hand quilting stitches. So that's another reason you can see these, both of these little quilts were hand quilted, okay? And I love to go through them with my 12 weight cotton thread for hand quilting. There's no weight, there's almost no bulk in there that's gonna cause me to either be forcing too much uh, force on my fingers as I'm trying to push the needle and thread through there, right? And the stitches just look beautiful on it. Great stitch definition. And so this is another one of those reasons. So again, if you're looking for like mid-weight, the select one, you can see this is a crib size quilt. And look how it just folds up. You can put this in any little diaper bag, just slide it in there. If you're someone who doesn't really wanna have synthetics in their projects, this is a great, great batting to go with. I'll include a link below to my online shop because we do carry it in both weights. The request, which is the thinnest, select, which is that medium weight, and then in a ton of different sizes, okay? Now, Quilter's Dream does not recommend that you pre-wash this batting. Some other manufacturers may require that. The shrinkage on this cotton batting is so minimal, it's really not even noticeable. It's about one to 3% shrinkage. So if you're someone who likes to make a quilt and then you wash it before you gift it to someone and you get that nice kind of crinkled, very loved on quilt, you know what I'm talking about when you get the wrinkly, wrinkly quilt that just feels so soft and fluffy? That's about all you're gonna get with the one to 3% shrinkage. So I personally love the way that that looks after I wash the batting in the finished quilt, and it's not going to really affect your quilt to the point where a ton of it is shrinking up, like you might find with some other products on the market. Now that the batting is out of the way, remember that there's still one more layer left to our quilt sandwich, and that is going to be the backing fabric, that layer of fabric that goes on the back side of the quilt. And similar to the batting, that piece too needs to be larger than your quilt top. Now, a lot of it is going to depend on how you plan to finish your quilt. So if you're hand quilting it yourself, you might need a different size backing fabric than if you're sending it off to a long armor to be quilted, so keep that in mind. If you are sending it off to a long armor to finish the quilt for you, make sure that you inquire about the specifics that they require to load the quilt backing, batting, and even quilt tops to their specific machine setup because those usually go up on take up rollers and you need to have a lot more in the length than you do in the width typically to get that backing loaded onto the frame so they can proceed with long arm quilting it. So how much bigger the backing fabric needs to be is gonna depend a lot on how you plan to finish the quilt. I have definitely gotten away with barely an inch or two extra on top and bottom if I'm gonna be machine quilting it myself or hand quilting it myself. So keep those things in mind as well when you're deciding what fabric you wanna use for your backing or if you're out there purchasing yardage as well. And then once you choose that backing fabric, you'll also have to do some math to figure out how you need to cut the fabric or how you need to cut and piece it together to end up with a panel that's large enough to be used as backing for that specific quilt top. If you choose your typical quilting cotton for the backing fabric that comes at a, a pretty standard 40 to 45 inch width, then you typically will have to piece two large chunks together, but there's also 
also another super handy option that a lot of us are now using these days to finish off our quilts with the quilt backing. And that is quilting cotton fabric that comes at 108 inches wide. It's amazing, it's super handy, and if you buy two yards of that, you're gonna have enough backing for a couple of quilts. And so if that's something that you choose, make sure that you ask at your local quilt shop or you do some research so you can see what options at the 108 inch wide back are available to you. So we've talked a little bit about batting, about your backing fabric options, and then the last step that you're going to use to finish off your quilt is going to be the quilt binding. This is the finished edge of your quilt that's going to encase and hide all the raw edges of those three layers that we've already mentioned. The quilt top, the batting, and the quilt backing. The binding hides all of that and gives it a nice kind of framed out edge on the exterior of the quilt, both on the front and back, for a nice clean finish. Now the binding is gonna be totally up to you. You'll probably wanna use a quilting cotton fabric as well, but I am a big fan of piecing my quilt binding, so scraps that you may have left over from that current quilt top that you're working on, that way you'll know the fabrics will match. If you have half yard chunks or three quarters yards chunks of other fabric on, in your stash already that will match, you can cut those up into strips as well. Now, if maybe you're further along in this quilt along process than I am going with the videos, know that I have multiple video tutorials already on my YouTube channel, sharing with you some different ways on how you can finish your quilt. Hand tying your quilt, hand quilting your quilt, sit down machine free motion quilting your quilts. I have video series on all of these and then also on how to long arm quilt your quilt. I also have several tutorials showing you how to measure and figure out how much binding you'll need, how many binding strips to cut out, how to cut, sew, and piece the binding on, and even how to hand sew the binding to the back. So if you're already looking to maybe finish off another quilt that you're working on, I'll include links below on where you can find all those video tutorials. Another quick and easy way to do the search is right here on YouTube. Just type in Crafty Gemini, and then a couple of keywords for whatever it is that you're looking for. So an example would be Crafty Gemini Free Motion Quilting and all my seven videos that I currently have on free motion quilting will pop right up for you. Crafty Gemini quilt binding, and those videos will pop right up for you. So that's a quick and easy way for you to do a search to find if there's instructional videos that I've done on a specific topic you're looking to learn. All right, and that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned a little bit more about batting and backing and that you'll even give the Quilter's Dream batting that I love and highly recommend a try. I've included the link for you below on where you can get it. We carry it in our online shop in several different sizes and currently in those two different loft sizes that I mentioned, the select, which is that medium one, and the request, which is that thinner loft that I absolutely love. So use the link, check it out, and you can make that purchase from us. If you enjoyed this video tutorial, and if you're learning something from my videos, leave me a comment below, and remember to give the video a thumbs up. I definitely appreciate all your support. Feel free to share it with your quilty friends and don't forget to click the subscribe button most of all so you make sure you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.